Good day, everyone. This is Karen Grace Clark, Program Chair of Gold uh, Lactation Online Conference. And I'm here with uh, Dr. Allison Stubbe talking about building a breastfeeding culture using the six sources of influence. This is a presentation that Dr. Allison Stubbe will be giving as the keynote presentation for Gold Lactation Online Conference on April 16th. And I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Stubbe some questions here. Uh, tell us, uh, Allison, how will this presentation help lactation professionals carry out their work with breastfeeding mothers? Well, I think when we're providing support to breastfeeding moms, we're really trying to help people change their behavior or learn a new behavior. And I think that when I first got into this, I thought if we just told women to breastfeed, then surely everyone would do it. Um, similarly, I thought if I just told other health professionals to do the things I knew would make it easier for women to breastfeed, they would say, of course, and they would start doing it. Um, in fact, as I have learned and as we all know, getting people to try a new behavior and incorporate it into their lives is not something that just happens if you say it. Um, and so this is going to be a talk about how to change behavior and what we can do to enable more women to breastfeed successfully and also to help the folks who influence breastfeeding um, to do the things that we know are going to make it easier to have a breastfeeding culture. Excellent. Thank you for that answer. I, I know I myself am very much looking forward to this presentation. Tell me about how you became interested in the six sources of influence, Allison. So last fall, I was fortunate to participate in a leadership conference. And one of the presentations was about the six sources of influence. Um, and as I've said with the first question, when I first got interested in breastfeeding, I remembered thinking that you know, if we could just publish a paper showing that breastfeeding was important for women's health, then everybody would just do it. Um, and I've been fortunate to publish several of those papers in my career and, and haven't found that everyone just does what they're supposed to do. Um, so the six forces, sources of influence is a model that lays out how on an individual, community, and systems level, we need to address two different questions if we want to change behavior. One is, is it worth it? And the second is, can I do it? And if we're not tackling both of those questions at multiple levels, we're not going to be able to change that behavior. So the six sources of influence maps this out and really gives us a schematic where if we say, OK, we want to get more babies skin to skin in the first hour of life, what are the different places we need to go to make that actually happen in a hospital setting, as opposed to just wishing it to be so or pleading with people to do it, which is how I spent a lot of my first few years in this business trying to, trying to move people's behavior. Um, so this, I'll give you an intro to the six sources in the talk um, and then refer you to the group at Vital Smarts who's developed this model um, so that you can learn more and then really turn around to whatever it is you're trying to change tomorrow and do it much more effectively. Excellent. Thank you. It does sound like really important information. I know that our delegates and uh, just individuals, lactation professionals, healthcare professionals out there, uh, you know, all around the world uh, will find this very, very useful for the work that they're doing. Um, tell us, Allison, how have you applied these lessons in the work that you do? So one of the initiatives going on right now at UNC Hospital is initiating milk expression in mothers of preterm babies. Um, and one of our neonatologists is spearheading this effort to get more mother's milk for our preterm babies and was having trouble getting moms started with expressing milk, particularly if they were on our labor and delivery floor for a protracted period. Um, and so we actually put out the grid for the six sources and began to think about what are the individual issues of motivation and of ability for the nurses on our postpartum floor, what are the group issues in terms of peer support and, and peer pressure, if you will, um, for healthcare providers to take this on as their responsibility, and then what were the systems issues? For example, the pump kits weren't in a place where they could be located easily on labor and delivery, and so it was hard to initiate pumping. Um, so this was an example of where we were able to lay out the six sources and sort of write in the different boxes and really come up with a quality improvement effort that was going to be much more powerful than just sending out an email saying, hey, everybody, we need to pump sooner. 
Excellent. Thank you for sharing that. It is really nice to hear um, how things can be applied uh, on a personal and professional level. So, so thank you for sharing that, Allison. Uh, we've come to the end of our interview, and I would just like to uh, thank you for participating with us today. And I would like to remind everybody who's listening that there is still time to register both for Gold Lactation Online Conference, which starts on April 22nd, and of course to reserve your seat for the keynote presentation, which is on April 16th. Uh, check out our website at goldlactation.com for more information. Once again, Allison, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. I'm looking forward to meeting everybody on the 16th.